In this video, I want to have a closer look at the coefficients of our binomial expansions and prove a couple of the properties about them. So just to refresh our memories, this is the expansion of a plus b to the power of n. And the first thing that I want to prove is that n c0 is equal to 1. So to do that, I'm going to let a equal 1 and b equal 0. So then this expansion, we're going to have 1 plus 0 to the power of n. It's going to be equal to n c 0, a, which is 1, so 1 to the power of n. Then we're going to have n c 1, a to the power of n minus 1, but a is 1, so we're going to have 1 to the power of n minus 1. And then we're going to have that multiplied by b, which in our case is 0. So we'd have n c 2, 1 to the power of n minus 2, um, b, which is 0, to the power of 2. And that would continue on all the way up until our last term, which would be ncn times 0 to the power of n. Now, because all of those terms except that very first one are going to have a b in them, and our b is 0, then all of these terms are going to be 0, and we're just going to end up with nc0, 1 to the n, so this first term here. Now, we know that 1 to the power of anything is just 1, so that is just nc0. And if we simplify this side here, we end up with 1 equal to nc0. So that's the proof of our first coefficient. We want to prove that our last coefficient is 1 as well. So we're trying to prove that ncn is equal to 1. And our proof is going to be incredibly similar, except this time we're going to let a equal 0 and b equal 1. So then we're going to end up with 0 plus 1 to the power of n is going to be nc0 times 0 to the power of n plus nc1 times 0 to the power of n minus 1 times 1, plus nc2 times 0 to the power of n minus 2 times 1 squared, and I'll just have to do it underneath. That's going to go all the way up until we get to our final term, which is going to be ncn times 1 to the power of n. Now this time, every term except for this very last one is going to contain a 0, so that means that we're just going to have this final term here. So this uh, left-hand side is going to simplify just to 1, and this final term here will just simplify to ncn. So that proves that our first and our last coefficients are both 1. The next thing I want to prove is the symmetry of those coefficients. So I want to prove that nck is equal to ncn minus k. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the factorial notation of combinations. So nck is going to be defined as n factorial, over n minus k factorial, k factorial. Now that's our left hand side. Our right hand side would be n c n minus k, and that's going to be defined as n factorial over n minus n minus k factorial, n minus k factorial. Now if we go through and simplify this bracket here, we have n factorial on the top. And down here, we'd have n minus n, and then we've got a minus minus k, so we'd have k factorial for that first bracket, and then we'd have n minus k factorial for the second bracket still. So that's proving to us that, therefore, n c k is equal to n c n minus k, so it's proving that symmetry. The last thing that I want to prove is this relationship here, and this is what's going to prove the link between our combinations and Pascal's triangle. Because this is saying that we can find one combination by adding two earlier combinations. And Pascal's triangle is built to find one term, you add two of the terms from the line above it. So to prove this relationship, I'm going to start by expanding 1 plus x to the power of n minus 1. So if we go through and expand that, we know we're going to have n minus 1, c0, plus n minus 1, c1, x, plus n minus 1, c2, x squared, all the way up until we get to n minus 1, c n minus 1, x to the power of n minus 1. Now I'm going to multiply everything in here by x. So I'm going to have x outside of 1 plus x to the power of n minus 1. So that's going to give me n minus 1, c 0, x plus n minus 1, c 1, x squared plus n minus 1, c 2, x cubed. And this final term is going to be n minus 1, c, n minus 1, x to the power of 
n. Now I'm going to call this one equation 1 and this one equation 2, and I'm going to add those two equations together. So adding them together, I'm going to have x outside of 1 plus x to the power of n minus 1 plus 1 plus x to the power of n minus 1. And when I add them, I'm also going to collect like terms. So this one here and this one here are like terms because they both have an x. And then we've got the next one along that both have x squared. So collecting all of those like terms as I move along. So my first term is just going to be this one here that's on its own. So n minus 1 c naught plus, then I'm going to have n minus 1 c naught plus n minus 1 c1 x plus um, for my x squared terms, I've got n minus 1 c1 plus n minus 1 c2 x squared. And for my x to the power of n term here, I'd also have a term just before this one, which would have an x to the power of n as well. So for that term, I'm going to have n minus 1 c n minus 1 plus n minus 1 c. And the term before this one would be n minus 2 and that's x to the power of n. And then I'd also have this term here on the end, so I'll just have to write that in underneath. So I'd have plus n minus 1 c n minus 1, x to the power of n minus 1. We can simplify this left-hand side. So it has a common factor of 1 plus x to the power of n minus 1. So if we pull that out, we're going to end up with x plus 1 left. And if we then simplify that, because x plus 1 and 1 plus x are the same thing, that can be simplified to 1 plus x, just to the power of n, if we add the indices. So we have this is equal to this whole expansion here. So this is the left-hand side here. We also know the expansion of this. So we can have um, the expansion of that. So if the left-hand side of this equation has to equal this, then this expansion here has to equal the right-hand side of this equation. Because we know that, then we can start to equate coefficients. Okay, I've just made myself some space up the top. So if we go through and equate coefficients, the coefficient of x here is this whole thing. So we've got n minus 1 c0 plus n minus 1 c1. And that has to be equal to the coefficient of x in this expression, which is just n c1. If we have a look at the next term along, so our x squared term, we can equate those coefficients. So we'll have n minus 1 c1 plus n minus 1 c2 is equal to n c2. And we could keep going for all of those terms, but the pattern that you can see is that we're going to end up with n minus 1 c k minus 1 plus n minus 1 c k is equal to n c k, which is what we were trying to prove here. And like I said, that is the proof of the connection between Pascal's triangle and these combinations that we can use as well. So in Pascal's triangle, if we just draw one up quickly, if we have a look at it, we've got the four here, which is the three plus the one. So if we look at these combinations, to get this number here, the four, we would have four C three. To get the three, that's come from doing three C two. And the 1 is 3c3. So that's holding this relationship, and it's the same way that we build Pascal's triangle. Right, so that's having a look at the coefficients of our binomial expansions.